has made quite a few different special versions of the Miata. I think at one point I worked out something like one out of every eight Miatas of the first two generations is some sort of special edition. Different unique colors, different trim options, sort of like trading cards. But there's always been one special version of the Miata. It's not the most rare. They made almost 5,500 of them that's really stood out among collectors and enthusiasts as being the only factory turbo option. So obviously we're talking about the Mazda Speed Miata. They made about almost 5,500 of them, but the intention was actually to make quite a few more than that but there was a fire in the factory and so the 2004 model year they made about 4,000 and then about 1,400 the next year um, but the the fire at the factory cut production short in 2005 both with the Mazda Speed and the other versions uh, 2005 there just isn't a lot of cars that were made but one of the nice things about it is from the outside, it's pretty understated. You have some of the some of the nicer features that were available, plus a few little extras. But it's it's very modest for what was, you know, kind of the hot boy version of the Miata at the time. And we have to remember the time period. This was the early 2000s, when some car styling and tuner type of modifications got a little bit out of control. So seeing this as, you know, sort of understated and classy, it's always kind of nice. The Mazda didn't go a little bit too far with it. There's quite a few things that are unique about this car. And I'm gonna start out by just saying that a lot of this is gonna reference things from my other videos. Um, so we're gonna talk a lot about the two different versions of the second generation Miata which are known as the NB1, which is 99 and 2000, and then the NB2, which is 2001 to 2005. As this incorporates some of the best parts of both of those generations, as well as some features that were unique only to the Mazda Speed. So starting over at the rear of the car, one of the first things you'll notice, there's this, this little lip at the bottom and the spoiler specific to the Mazda Speed. And of course, badging to let you know. So one of the first things that'll definitely catch your eye about these is the wheels. So these are 17 inch racing heart wheels. At the time, these were the biggest wheels that had ever been offered on a Miata from the factory. And then behind the wheels, it does have what would be considered the NB2 sport brakes. So they were available as an option on other models, but just a little bit bigger brakes. Coming around to the front, you've got very much an NB2 style bumper. So it would have been the current generation bumper and the projector headlights. And then it does have a unique lip here, specific to the Mazda Speed. There were other versions um, that have different types of lips or you may hear people describe them as the large or small Tupperware kit, but the Mazda Speed got a unique, unique version of that. Now we'll take a look at the interior. Now the Mazda Speed interior was a little bit unique. There were all sorts of little badges hidden all over the place. The door sills say Mazda Speed. It's got unique pedals, including the dead pedal aluminum pedals that say Mazda Speed on them. The gauge faces, kind of a silver color and have red backlighting. 
Also, of course, it does say Mazda speed on the tachometer. And then this would have been the highest trim level equivalent um, at the time. So it had, you know, the, the Bose speakers and the leather seats, all the all the higher end things that were available for the Miata at the time. Now, this particular Mazda speed is interesting because if you if you're familiar with Mazda speeds, you would know normally the interior has red accents, red stitching, you know, little things like that to kind of make it unique. But this one in particular is rare even amongst Mazda speeds. The brown interior accents, steering wheel, seats. This was not actually like any Mazda speed that you could have ordered from the factory. This actually truly is a one of one car that was custom built from the factory for a, for a VIP in the industry and is really not like any other Mazda speed that you'll ever see. So now that we've had a look around the outside of the car and the inside, we're gonna take a look at what everybody probably came here to see. So if you've ever taken a look under the hood of a Miata or seen any of my other videos, you'll notice there's a very specific layout that they all follow over at least the first two generations. So now when we go over and take a look at the Mazda speed, you can see suddenly there's a lot more going on under here. So here you have the heart of the Mazda speed Miata. We'll get into a few details of what's going on with all this plumbing in here in just a moment. Um, but the, the numbers for this, it is the same displacement as the, of the other NB2 engines. So it's a 1.8 liter dual overhead cam. This one does not have VVT. We'll talk about that in, in a minute here. And with the factory equipped turbo, it's running just over seven pounds of boost and it makes almost 180 horsepower. I think it's like 178. And interestingly, it actually doesn't rev quite as high as a base model Miata. The red line on a, on a regular NB Miata would be 7,000. And these actually have a red line that's only 6,500 RPM. So it's just a little bit lower. Again, you know, kind of keeping things a little bit safe. This is basically the same motor that was run in all the other NB Miatas. And so I think they were kind of trying to take it a little bit easy because the motor theoretically wasn't designed um, to make this much power or to, or to have boost. Now we're gonna try to do sort of a quick rundown of what some of this is. But unfortunately, you can't actually see the turbo very well. If we come over onto this side, you can just see some of the heat shielding down here. Um, but the turbo itself is pretty much completely concealed under all the heat shielding. All right, so here's a look at the turbo. It is very hard to see while it's in the car. So luckily, I've got a spare one that I had laying around the shop so you can get a little bit closer look. You can see you've got the, the manifold here where it would connect to the engine. You can see it, it hangs down pretty low along the side of the engine, pretty close to the side of the engine as well. Very compact. It's not a particularly large turbo, but it does a pretty good job for what it needs to do. See, this is where the air comes in, and then the compressed air comes out. So we'll show that in the video where they kind of come in over the top of the valve cover to get to those. And then the downpipe hooks on right here. You can kind of get a good view there of like the internal wastegate mechanism and then the actual blades of the turbo itself in there. So when you first look at all the tubes here, it seems like kind of a giant maze, but we can follow basically the, the air path that's going on through all this. So similar to many of the other Miatas, you've got the air box here and the intake tube. So the intake's bringing in air here from kind of just behind the headlight, it goes down to the underside of the air box through the filter 
through the mass airflow sensor and then it comes down and it goes around right over to here and then this is feeding into the turbo itself down from the top and then the output the pressurized air from the turbo is then coming through this tube here goes down behind the headlight almost back to where the air came in originally and then that goes down behind the headlight and in front of the radiator you have the inner cooler here to cool down the air that was compressed and heated by the turbo and then that goes along and comes up just in front of the radiator here up through this pipe and then into the intake so the main components are kind of still in the same place. The, the filter box and the mass airflow and all that is pretty much where it would normally be. And then in almost any other Miata, it would come out here, just go straight across and in. Over here we've got the master cylinder, both for the brakes and for the clutch. Basically the same as other Miatas. However, there is an interesting feature on the master cylinder for the clutch. You see there's this extra fitting here and it's got this banjo versus just normally having a flare fitting going into the master cylinder and this is actually a sort of delay release valve which Mazda put in I guess because they were worried about you know dumping the clutch too hard and um, sort of having that shock through the drivetrain so if you let go of the clutch really fast instead of just grabbing immediately the clutch will actually sort of grab progressively, almost as if you had taken your foot off a little bit slower. So the engine itself is actually quite similar to an NB1 Miata engine. Uh, it's almost identical to that as far as the, the cylinder head, the, the intake manifold, um, all of that. In fact, even the throttle body still has BP4W stamped on it. Um, really a lot of the same components there which is interesting that this was built in 2004 so the nb2 generation had been going for a little while and so it's kind of curious that they ended up putting the slightly older generation of engine in it um, this also does not have vvt really one of the only significant elements to the engine itself um, that actually represents the, the sort of time period or the, the NB2 cars that were being built alongside it is that they moved the, the coils instead of being behind the engine like the older versions um, just like the NB2s they have the, the coils on top of the engine in sort of what I would call kind of like a, a false coil on plug layout. You've got two coils that are directly over cylinder 2 and cylinder 4 and then they have a wire coming off of there um, going to the other two. So it is still only a two coil batch fire or wasted spark ignition system. Um, but that's the same as that they would have in the, in the NV2 generation. Then of course, up front here, we've got our, our intake air temperature sensor, all types of plumbing here. We've got a solenoid that helps control boost. We've got the blow off valve here to release pressure. The Mazda Speed Miatas do also have a unique radiator and fan setup. It's just a little bit more efficient radiator. It's, it's virtually the same size, but it's a little bit more efficient layout and slightly upgraded fans compared to the other generation. And then we come over to the passenger side here and most of this is pretty much the same as the other NB Miatas. Uh, you've got a bunch of plumbing here it has to do with the emission system. And then the Mazda Speed Miatas also were equipped with ABS. So ABS was available but not standard on other versions of the Miata. Um, but all the Mazda Speeds have ABS. All right, so we're going to go to the underside take a look at some of the things that are different under there. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the underside of the Mazda Speed Miata. We already got a little look earlier at the inner cooler there. Now, most of the stuff under here is very similar 
um, to what would have been the current NB2 model at the time. But a few of the, the key differences. So if we look over here at the front suspension, as well as increasing the power, Mazda also stiffened up the chassis a little bit. So we've got slightly larger anti-roll bars or sway bars, slightly stiffer springs, you can see up there. They're slightly stiffer and just a little bit lower than a normal Miata. And then it also has the Bilstein shocks to give it a little bit firmer ride. As we move further back, got the oil pan here. Now there's a little bit extra as far as this bracing and sort of covers here for the Mazda speed. But the primary elements of the bracing are the same as pretty much any NB2. We got this plate here, gives some additional chassis support. And then this other brace back here as well. It's got the six speed transmission. So again, this was optional on other Miatas, but the six speed came standard on the Mazda speed. As we've discussed with some of the other upgrades on this, uh, it basically was sort of the best of what was available at the time. The Mazda Speed Miata also has a unique exhaust. It is just a little bit bigger diameter. And as we go towards the back, it also has a unique muffler. It's just a little more aggressive than the stock one. It's really still quite quite quiet and tame but yeah of course on the on the exhaust tip it says Mazda speed and take a look at the rear differential it's a limited slip differential it is unique to the Mazda speed it's just slightly different from a stock Miata at the time unique half shafts as well and then the rear suspension got a very similar treatment um, to the front so we've got a little bit stiffer sway bar and then a little bit stiffer spring as well so a little bit stiffer rear spring and just a little bit lower and then the bilstein shocks of course as well we come up over here on the driver's side and kind of peek through the wheel well here and sort of get just a little glimpse of the turbo there really all just hidden behind heat shields. That's where the turbo is located, kind of down low here on the driver's side. All right, we're back up top now. As you can see, that's the key details of what makes a Mazda Speed Miata unique and special. And I think really of, of all the special editions of Miatas, um, you, as I do these videos, I'm not really planning on doing you're covering in detail really most of the special editions. I think we've talked a little bit about like the M edition and things like that um, in the past, but this was this was a special edition Miata that definitely deserved its own video. Definitely one of the most sought after, I think, of all the special editions and, and for good reason. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about this version of the Miata, Feel free to let me know in the comments. I'll try to answer them the best I can. But appreciate you guys coming along to view. I mean, this is, I really just have to say this, I really, what pushed me to make this video is this really just is one of the cleanest examples um, of a Mazda Speed that we've had come in the shop. We've, we've seen quite a few over the years, um, but this one, it actually has, I think 11,000 miles. I want to say 11,400 miles. Absolutely all original. And really wanted to be able to show that. You know, as a lot of them get modified. There's a lot of, you know, different intake kits and things that, um, that are really common for people to do. But it's pretty rare that you get to see one that really just kind of looks like a, uh, like a time capsule. It just came out of the the Mazda factory. So thanks for, thanks for hanging out.